Greetings, pen pals. Uh, we have another pretty nice pen here from Moon Man today. This is the P135. Now, this clearly is meant to mimic a very, very high end uh, limited edition commemorative pen from Mont Blanc, which uh, commemorates the French author uh, Saint Exupere, who you may be familiar with, wrote The Little Prince, etc. That's his, his main thing he's famous for. So, the Mont Blanc version has all sorts of um, uh, 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 pictures and patterns and, and stuff on it to to, uh, to commemorate Saint Exupere and his writings and the Little Prince in particular. Um, this one has st stuff that, while avoiding directly copying the artwork on the Mont Blanc pen, is very much thematic like it. So we'll get to those details in a minute. But just do keep in mind if you don't like pens that clearly are meant to mimic another pen, dare I say copy another pen, um, you clearly won't be happy with this one because all it's, it's obviously not trying to be a counterfeit because the Mont Blanc logo doesn't appear anywhere on here or anything like that and the artwork is clearly different. So they're clearly not making a counterfeit pen, but um, it definitely uh, uh, is meant to be sort of a, um, a um, I don't want to say a homage, but uh, it's definitely meant to uh, to to be a design uh, 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 themed after that Mont Blanc pen. So if that sort of thing bothers you, you're definitely not going to like this pen. Um, but anyway, let's keep going. So it's a decently hefty pen because the cap is all metal, very, very solid, etc. Weighs in at 36 grams. Size-wise, it's um, fairly conventionally sized. Here it is uh, compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So you can see it is really much, uh, pretty much spot uh, uh, aligned with uh, these guys uh, in terms of length. Can we compare it to some other pens, including some other Moon Man pens? Yes, we certainly can. Okay, so here is our, um, our uh, Moon Man P135. As you can see, it's a, a little bit smaller than a Moon Man M800. It's a little bit smaller as well than a Moon Man uh, M8. It's about the same size as a Wingsung uh, 601. Um, and it's um, also a tiny bit smaller than a Pen BBS uh, 309. So um, it's, it's a fairly conventionally sized pen, both in girth and length, I would say. Not really out of line. Uh, with anything. So the ones here that it's smaller than, it's only smaller by, by a very small uh, amount, as you, can, uh, as you can clearly see. So again, we're really dealing with not an oversized pen, not a compact pen, just a very, very straight up the middle, uh, very standard sized pen. In terms of the features of this pen, um, it comes in a couple of different colors. This particular finish, they we call dark, they call this one dark red. It's maybe a maroon. Uh, to me, it's a very, it's, it's very much kind of maroonish, uh, bordering on brown, really. So I wouldn't. I would call this more of a dark maroon brown, really, rather than any kind of red. But uh, in any case, that's what they that's what they call it. Um, now the cap's got a lot going on on the cap. It's a heavy piece of metal. It's got a lot of artwork here, um, uh, kind of echoing like um, uh, uh, beaches and mountains, and uh, you got the, the the sun and the moon. And you got a bird flying here, etc. Again, there's artwork on the Mont Blanc version of this that is similar, but it's different. So this is different enough that they're not accused of directly stealing the Mont Blanc artwork, um, um, but um, but yet it is very much uh, reminiscent of the style of that. And this stuff is very deeply cut in here. You can actually feel. Uh, this on here. So this is sort of very deep, deeply cut here, and it's, it, it looks very, very nice, I will say. Um, around the cap, it says Moon Man twice in uppercase letters. There's two bands above and below where it says Moon Man, which are matte finish metallic inset into the otherwise um, uh, a smooth metal on the rest of the cap, and that just looks really nice. That offsets it very, very well. Nothing special about the clip, but it is a nice clip that is functional. Uh, the finial on the top is sort of a pearl, um, just sort of a pearlized uh, jewel that looks pretty nice, and it is smooth metal on the back to look like a piston turning knob, 
uh, it is not a piston turning knob. The Mont Blanc version does have a piston turning knob, but this is a, a, a cartridge converter uh, pen. Um, it is uh, screw to uncap. It takes one full turn to uncap. In terms of posting, it I guess physically posts and that this will kind of go on there, but it doesn't really stay on well at all. So you, if you want to just put the cap on the end just as a place to keep it, I guess you can do that. Um, but uh, it, it really the, the, it really doesn't stay on well at all. It's it, it's pretty it, it's pretty loose. Um, the section is plastic uh, and it just matches the rest of the body of the pen. Um, this threads are very, very smooth. There's trim rings on either end of the section, which look pretty nice, but the threads and the step down here are really smooth and not cumbersome at all. So it is actually pretty comfortable. It is, it actually does feel quite back weighted with the cap on. Um, it, it's a little short to me on posted. So I actually do, I'm a big fan of posting when it's even physically possible. So I do post this, but you may, not want to post this. Um, the nib itself is a number five steel nib. It's unlabeled in terms of nib size. It says Moon Man with the Moon Man logo, which has the little feature that looks kind of like a drop of ink. It has some scroll work, etc., And it has, of course, a um, uninspiring uh, plastic feed. And like we said, it is a cartridge converter fill. It does come with a pretty nice converter with Moon Man branding on the converter, but there's metal all over the place here. So you're clearly not going. There's metal inside the barrel, this metal piece here. This is not a pen you will ever be eyedroppering. Um, so that's pretty much the features of this pen. Like we said, oh, uh, one other thing, the nib, um, I should mention is sort of a mini food a nib. So it definitely has a little bit of a, uh, of an upturn on the nib, which is pretty nice. Uh, it writes quite well as we'll see, uh, in the, uh, in the writing sample. Um, it, um, it, you know, it's a very, very pretty pen. It's a hefty pen. Um, I like it quite a bit. What this really, I think will come down to whether this pen is for you or not is if a pen that is an, very much a non-original design uh, is something that bothers you. In other words, meaning that there are a lot of people that say, if a pen has a design that's unique, that came from someplace else, I want the one that originated it. I don't want the one that is simply a copy of the design. Now we're talking about a Mont Blanc pen that costs thousands and thousands of dollars, and I'm not exaggerating. So that pen is gonna be largely unobtainable for the vast majority of the people who might want a pen like this. So one can view this as a more financially accessible version of that pen, et cetera. But just keep in mind that this is not an original design by any means. This is a design that originated with Mont Blanc, that Moon Man is, uh, for lack of a better word, copying the design elements of. Um, and so there's not a lot of originality here. Um, if that doesn't bother you, then you'll, and you like this, then by all means, go ahead. There are some people who will basically say, I'm not going to support that by buying this pen because this is just, they're just copying somebody else's design. Um, that's totally, uh, that's totally uh, uh, up to you. I mean, you could say the exact same thing uh, about the M800, for example, the M800 is clearly not an original design. Um, this is somewhat a more of a classical looking fountain pen. So one can argue there's only so many ways you can make a fountain pen of this type. So yeah, uh, but it is definitely copying a pen from Leonardo, uh, et cetera. So again, it really comes down to how much uh, of this sort of thing uh, bothers you, uh, et cetera. So that's really an individual, an individual choice thing. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much the features and design elements of, uh, of this particular uh, uh, pen. Um, but as we always say, pens were meant to write. And of course you wanna see how this pen writes and I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay, what we're writing with here is a Moon Man. P135. And this has a number five mini Fude. And this is in fine. And um, it is steel. 
and this this writes quite quite well um, I really like it it's 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 smooth I would say it's pretty average straight up the middle in terms of wetness which is which is attractive um, but it writes really really well um, again I didn't do anything to this nib in terms of a smoothing or anything like that so out of the box it worked well which I've had some moon man nibs primarily the number six size moon man nibs uh, in the last year or so I've had a lot of trouble with that really required some I mean, none of them were like fatally flawed but I had some that really required me to tune them and fiddle with them quite a bit to get them to write properly not so much with the number five nibs so uh, clearly there's something different going on there at least um, but uh, again nice nice uh, nib writes well I'm uh, quite quite uh, pleased with it so um Speaking of quite being quite pleased, one thing that would really quite please me is if you folks could all please like, comment, share, and subscribe. That would be most welcome if you could please do that. Um, so anyway, that's about it for this pen and the features of the pen. But uh, let's talk about this ink now for a minute, shall we? Okay, what we're writing with here is an American made ink from a company in New Orleans. So this is Papier Plume. Sepia. And uh, this is a pretty, uh, pretty, nice, uh, pretty nice ink. So it uh, comes in this uh, nice bottle. This is uh, from Papier Plume in New Orleans. Um, and uh, it's got a nice little fleur de lis on top, of course, being from New Orleans. Um, but uh, nice, nice uh, ink. Here's what the color card uh, looks like for the Papier Plume uh, Sepia. So here it is compared to some other inks that you might be wondering what it looks like uh, next to them. So here's what it looks like next to Platinum Pigmented uh, sepia, which is uh, another sepia ink. So it is it is a bit similar to that, although definitely lighter. Uh, here it is compared to, say, Colorverse Coffee Break, which is definitely a more, definitely a browner ink. Similar with Noodler's Golden Brown, definitely a browner ink. Um, and again, um, uh, Diamine Tobacco uh, Sunburst um, as well. So, um, the most similar ink that I have to it anyway would definitely be the other sepia ink that I have, which is platinum uh, pigmented sepia. But uh, Papia Plume sepia, pretty, pretty uh, nice, uh, nice looking, uh, nice looking ink. Um, definitely a, a sepia if that's what you're looking for. So uh, that's what this uh, uh, ink looks like on uh, this um, Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. Okay, as we said, this ink is Papier Plume. Sepia. Um, and again, pretty, pretty nice ink. Um, you know, um, I think it goes well with this particular pen. Obviously not a spot on match, but I think it... Uh, I think it goes uh, well with it, but um, sepias are kind of that old-fashioned looking color, so if you want something that kind of is um, uh, a vintage look to it, this definitely is, uh, is a good, uh, is a good uh, choice. Uh, speaking of good choice, I hope you think you made a good choice watching this video uh, this uh, week. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, because I certainly enjoyed making it. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.